The hyper-connected world we live in is an easy place to forget the nuance of specificity. In times of old, we found wonder and awe in the great variation between peoples, cultures, and landscapes. Today, in our known and ordered world, it is hard to imagine anything new under the sun. Difference is subordinated to international laws of politics, commerce, and science. The universal is prized and disseminated, while the particular is marginalized and ignored. But a new appreciation is growing for the discrete expressions of expertise embodied in traditional ecological knowledge, or tech. It is a cumulative body of knowledge and beliefs handed down through the generations about the relationship of living things with one another and with their environment. It includes an intimate and detailed knowledge of plants, animals, and natural phenomenon, and has a holistic worldview which parallels the scientific discipline of ecology. While tech enters global conversation through the most objective door, the door of scientific discipline, it is also a critical tool that creates a linguistic split, supplying toeholds for new initiatives and new ways of knowing. Tech not only holds important scientific observations about ecological spaces, it creates a space of value for narrative. By emphasizing storytelling, indigenous oral traditions do not attempt to abstract knowledge away from personalized human experience. Knowledge, therefore, maintains its emotional and personalized context in a dynamic fashion. In the old days, the living breath carried the teachings from one generation to the next. It tied the ages and held the knowledge of the people. That knowledge came to life in the winter when it was time to hear the stories. We each had our own story to listen to and our own memory to create. You see, we don't teach all our children exactly the same thing. If you teach them everything all the same, they won't need one another, and the world will split apart. In those days, some of us learned of the dragon, the keeper and protector of knowledge. The dragon lived in fantastic spaces. We would marvel at how such a grand animal could crouch under the bed and in dark corners. It was always looking for our most prized possession, the light we were given by the creator to nurture and share with others. The dragon, having fire but no light of its own, was drawn to our brilliance. When we would see the dragon coming, we would hide our light, afraid that by letting it shine it would be taken from us, that we would be left in lonely darkness. After a time, however, we forgot what it meant to shine for one another. Afraid of the dragon's attention, we allowed our own light to be diminished, muted in order to function under the dragon's gaze. One day we met the people who learned of the butterfly, the sharer of knowledge. They came to us as bright flashes of light seen through colored wings. In the dimness we had cultivated, we feared for them. Surely the dragons would carry off these luminous entities. We could not allow our beautiful new friends to be left to the perils of our dragons, so we each began to shine as brightly as we could to distract the dragons from the butterfly people. Instantly our dragons were upon us. The gaze of each was transfixed by the brilliance emanating from the dragon people. The menace of their fiery presence was not enough to stay our courage. In order to save these exquisite others, we would face our dragons, even if it meant certain death. But death did not come, and the butterfly people did not flee. In fact, they began advancing towards us with open arms. For a moment, confusion set in among the dragon people. Surely the danger was clear. What a risk to take when salvation seemed beyond their desire. And then the first of the butterfly people spoke, calling us in our own language. Finally, we can see you are like us, she said. But what do you mean, one of us replied. We cower in the face of our dragons. You live in the light of butterfly wings. Another replied, surely you must know that you can only see one side of a tree at a time. The other side will always remain hidden. Thus it is with your dragon. You can see only the terror in these imposing creatures, their fine eyes, their monstrous claws. But on the other side, you see that dragon is simply a butterfly in disguise. This is what we see in you now. And so it was with the dragon people.